its uh, loan policy is a scam. And it is key, and an argument has been made even in the book itself, really, that um, as at the time this was done, there was this euphoria. This euphoria, wow, the government has come with a solution to the problems of, uh, of uh, the students. We are going to, we love our children so much. And we understand how difficult it is to have access to proper education. So we are going to take care of your, your kids. That was euphoria. A euphoria that led, from what we are told, the National Association of Nigerian Students to commit what in our own time. Because the students today are beneficiaries of a legacy that was set by some other students. And with all sense of humility, we in our own time played our own role to set this legacy that some of the younger generation of children, the conscious ones who are fewer than in our own time, are trying to uphold. But a legacy that the older, that, that some other generation of students are desecrating every single day. The students need a delegation. Students used to have what you have uh, academic reforms, then ACARED policy for the federal government on educational policy and direction of this country. Oh, yes, thank you. So many, these were students of those, they, they were far ahead then. And so what you now do is that you have a decadent administration come up with a scheme and a scam to make education impossible, difficult and impossible for the students. And then you have students' representatives going to hail the government for destroying education. It gives you an idea of the disconnect and the lack of intellectualism and the ahistoricity of the Nigerian students today. That they are not able to do, make the necessary connections between the past and the present and the future. So let me just even go uh, to um, a few things here. Somebody has said that one of the worst things you can do to a person is to give the person false hope false hope. And this is what our politicians have constantly done to the Nigerian people. You are in dire need of help, very critical help, and you go to a person who has given you all the hope that you should meet him in the evening, that your problem is resolved. By the time you get there, the person has left, and he knows it's an emergency. Or he tells somebody to tell you that he's not around, even though he's at home. Where do you go to? So they are giving hope to Nigerian students once more. After encouraging the university system, the educational system to increase their fees, to make it difficult for students to be able to access education, which is their right. And then they present a whole paper that is they sell to the students, which they sell to the students. Ten reasons. And in a way, Sueto has talked about the reasons. But there was something he said here in his address, talking about the publication about how ill thought out it is, unnecessary, unworkable, anti-poor, and the cleverly packaged gimmick, and the cleverly packaged gimmick to destroy the fabric of public education to the detriment of the Nigerian people and our children's future, and to the detriment of our country. It's a carefully packaged, because people don't understand the depth of the vacuousness and the wickedness of the political class in this country. You talk about monies. Uh, so what he was talking about, I mean, 
He just went into a, a, a bit of a detail about the opulent lifestyles of our politicians in the midst of so much poverty. You know, and it is not, it is lost on a lot of us that we're in a very critical emergency situation. The first reason is one. Okay, yeah, it's a gimmick. We've already talked about that. It is a small scheme to take public education out of the reach of the poor. Because it is the poor that is supposed to have access to this. And let me just say this thing. Let me just say it. You're not doing any Nigerians favors by providing education for them. You're not. It is their right. But if you don't provide education for them, the social consequences, the burgeoning youthful you know, population in this country is enough threat, is enough clear and present danger about the situation of this country. The number of people that you see on the streets, whether they are area boys created by the government or whatever that you see, that have no job. Because what does education do to a person? Education refines the mind. Education refines the mind and increases the value of the person. You know, and so when, when you do not educate the mind and these people are unleashed on the society, you can be sure that the society will suffer the consequences of population that is not properly educated. It will transform public education into a business and students into customers. And that is what you have. Transactional edu you know, education. That's exactly what you're going to have. And of course, that it has not worked anywhere else. And people should tell us where it has worked. Because they borrowed from, from the United States, obviously, and from the United Kingdom. And he has also talked about the crisis of this loan, that this loan has generated in those countries, where for the past 30 years, 40 years, some people are still paying loans up to this very present moment. So, our own as a nation is to learn from the downfall of others or from the mistakes of others, and not to take from the mistakes of others and to repeat these mistakes. So, there is a lesson to learn. And these are the you know things that are even private and people don't understand because they will keep on telling you uh, education is not free. Education that these are things that education is not free. Go and find that I'm not talking about even public education institutions, even in the United States, even in the United Kingdom, in France and those other places. Private institutions are being funded even by by by, by public money. They don't tell people that. Why is it that as a result of the, the crisis in the Middle East today, maybe because of positions that universities have taken in support of one side or the other, in America there is a congressional hearing to determine why universities who are being funded also, these are private universities, Penn University, Harvard, and others, are private institutions. But the state is giving them some level of funding. Private institutions. Because here in Nigeria, they will tell you the, 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 the gimmick has always been, unless it is privatized, unless it is privatized, it's not going to work. But these are private institutions that are still benefiting. And we have seen what happened, even he talked about, about um, uh, uh, the, the, the discourse in the country. Are you talking about the airlines? So all of these things are elitist constructs to take away public enterprises or public assets from you and, and I and put it in the hands, in their own hands. So that at the end of the day, once they get into power, in the name, in the guise of privatization, they embark on asset stripping. What belongs to all of us eventually belongs to all of them. It's a game that they have been playing. Run them down, destroy them. It's a game. We don't understand. And then one day they'll begin to make 
they will come up with data facts because of the crisis they have created in the university system. They will talk about the quality of lecturers. They will talk about the quality of students. And then they now tell you that that's why we've been saying that the University of Lagos should be privatized. My fellow Nigerians, that's where they are going to. We know that this is the reason. This is what we have said. They are the ones that ran them down. They sold them to themselves. And they needed more money. And they came back to the government to collect more money for the private institutions that they had taken. This cause they did it. Banks, they did it. Airlines, they did it. So these are things we have seen constantly, continuously. So we must be aware of that fact. But what is even of critical importance is the people at the receiving end, the students. We saw what happened at the University of uh, at Lagos State University because we are part of it. When the government from 25,000 Naira, to show you the unconscionability of the political class in this country, from 25,000 Naira, in one fair soup, one governor sits down and said, increase it to 250, 350,000 Naira, because he can do it. And he can do it because he has told you that he can do it. What are you going to do? After Lord Rotimi Amechi told us, and then the <laughs> The one thing I, I might not like Rotimi Amechi as a person, but I like him for his garrulity and the way he talks too. He said that the Nigerian government can come here, line up 10 innocent people, and order them shot. And Nigerians will move on. That there's nothing you and I can do about it. And that is the truth. Until one day, and yet we know. Yet we know that secretly, my comrades, my dear Nigerians, yet we know that secretly these people fear us. Yet we know that they hold us in dread and terror. If they did not, they would not divide you people, us, along religious lines, along ethnic lines, along geopolitical lines. These are the reasons so that you will not come together to ask questions you should ask as citizens. Why is our educational system not working? Any country where its own elites do not use public institutions speaks volumes about the state of those institutions. Your elites are not using your universities. They are not using your schools. They are not using your hospitals. And you are asking why. So why would you think? How can they revamp education? Their children don't go there. So how do you think, how can anybody match the name of, of, of Nance that they're going to congratulate the president whose children have no business going to the, the, our universities, our polytechnics, our colleges of education, or our hospitals? So these are some of the issues. They have boldly told us by that action or inaction itself that there is nothing that, that your educational system will never work because they don't need it to work. Where a man's treasure, scripture tells us, at least I know, where a man's treasure is, there is what? There his heart will be. The treasure of the ruling class is not in our country. They are only there to continue to perpetrate their looting of our resources, to continue to satiate the interests of their treasure outside our country. So you think that this is just about educational? It's fantastic. But this goes beyond the crisis in the educational sector. It's a political question that you're asking. Why are our schools not working? It's a political question. Why can our children not have good education? It's a political question. <laughs>